This is a special report from WDHN News. Good morning, I'm Amanda Arnold reporting live from WDHN News. At any moment, we expect Alabama Governor Kay Ivey to appear at a news conference from the state capitol, and here she is now. Well, good morning. I'm joined today by EMA Director Brian Hastings and John Deblock of the National Weather Service, and we're here today to provide a briefing on Hurricane Sally to share with the people of Alabama what has been done so far and more importantly to discuss what we are currently working on going forward to keep our citizens safe as this slow moving storm takes landfall later tonight. Folks with any tropical storm the only thing you can predict is that things will change hour by hour. We started yesterday morning with a tropical storm that developed into a Category 1 hurricane which was forecasted to make landfall near New Orleans. Sally was upgraded to a Category 2 and by last night the weather folks were predicting this storm might become a Category 3. Thankfully early this morning it was downgraded to a Category 1. This just underscores how unpredictable Mother Nature can be. Early yesterday morning, my team and I began reaching out to leaders in Baldwin and Mobile counties knowing that the eastern side of a hurricane always has the stronger rain, wind, storm surge, and flash flooding with the possibility of tornadoes. In fact, I issued a state of emergency early yesterday morning in order to get our preparations underway. In talking with Congressman Byrne, as well as the various uh, mayors and county commissioners, we have offered every assistance humanly possible. Unfortunately, our local leaders are well experienced in emergency management. They've had a lot of practice over the years. So they are well aware that all they need to do is to let us know their needs and we'll be standing there shoulder to shoulder with them all the way. Shortly after our initial state of emergency was issued, the request came to close the beaches, which I did. And I also strongly recommended that all non-residents, as well as residents who live in low-lying areas that are prone to flood, needed to leave, leave as soon as possible. I did this in a supplemental state of emergency that was issued yesterday, just after lunch. And thankfully, it appears that many people heeded this voluntary evacuation. This morning at 7 a.m. we had additional rounds of calls with the local leaders and I also spoke with U.S. Department of Homeland Security Acting Secretary Chad Wolf as well as Pete Gaynor, Administrator of FEMA last night to ask them to expedite our request for a pre-landfall disaster declaration. And I am grateful that President Trump and his administration approved this request last night. And let me make one thing crystal clear, folks. The White House and the Trump administration have been great to our state. They've been in constant communication with my office, and we greatly appreciate their attention that they've paid, and they're keeping their eye on Alabama. Having once lived in Mobile, I'm well aware that those who live on the Gulf Coast are all too familiar with Mother Nature's wrath. We still hope and pray that Sally will not bring that type of pain and heartache, but my fellow Alabamians, Hurricane Sally is not to be taken for granted. We are looking at record flooding, perhaps breaking historic levels, and with uh, rising water comes a greater risk for loss of property and life. Sally has the potential to inflict major damage along our Gulf Coast and even further northward as it moves. For that reason, and especially for those living south of I-10 and in low-lying areas, I urge you in the strongest way possible to evacuate if conditions permit and seek shelter elsewhere as possible today as this storm makes landfall sometime tonight. Your local EMA will have information, and I know our friends in the media 
will provide to you this information to make the best decisions for you and your family. The current projections of this storm have most of our state in the path as it moves on through. Most counties in Alabama can potentially see some impact later tonight and certainly by Wednesday. While the middle and northern sections of our state will obviously not see the storm surge of the coastal regions, please be aware, however, that heavy rains, flash flooding, and even tornadoes can develop at any point tonight or tomorrow. I remind you to stay tuned to your local weather source, have a weather radio handy, and some extra batteries in case you lose power, and please heed the advice of your local leaders. They know the unique needs of your community. Director Hastings will now make brief remarks and the National Weather Service uh, Representative John Deblock will follow Brian. Brian? Thank you, Governor Ivey, for your support and leadership during this potentially historic storm. And I echo your appreciation to President Trump and his administration for his quick approval of our federal emergency declaration to provide needed emergency federal assistance to Alabama. The SEOC is activated. I want to thank our state agencies, public and private utilities, our volunteers like the Red Cross and the counties for their continued support to Alabama emergency response and recovery activities. Additionally, I appreciate the close partnership we enjoy with the National Weather Service, and it's great to have you here, John, and FEMA. The National Weather Service and FEMA are already embedded into our operations with a FEMA liaison officer, a coordination officer, and an incident management assistance team. Governor Ivey has also authorized the activation of the National Guard, and we currently have high water teams activated in Mobile and Baldwin counties. All our Alabama Mutual Aid System Swift Water Rescue Teams are on alert. FEMA and our neighboring states have already reached out to us to offer their assistance for search and rescue. Currently, there are two shelters open in Baldwin, I'm sorry, Mobile County and one on standby and one shelter open in Baldwin County. Before I close, I do wanna highlight Governor Ivey's message. Sally is shaping up to be a very dangerous an historic flooding event from the coastal counties along I-65 and the I-85 corridors. If you are in a low-lying area or a flood-prone area, get to a safer place and higher ground now before you see impacts. Do not drive through flooded areas. Turn around, don't drown. If you are in trouble or need assistance, call 911 and contact your local county EMA for up-to-date conditions, forecasts, closures, and local information. And please take action now to prepare for widespread power outages and you own the first 72 hours. So make sure that you have food, water, batteries, and a way to connect with assistance. And lastly, please connect in and stay in touch with your neighbors. The power of Alabama is Alabamians taking care of Alabamians. So social cohesion matters. Thank you. John. Thank you, Brian. Governor, it's an honor to work with the uh, Alabama Emergency Management Agency. As always, um, some late information. I think the governor hit it well. Our concerns about the variability and the changing forecast that Sally presents is quite a forecast challenge for us. And the other main theme that I want to talk about is the threat for water impacts, water-based impacts. As of 10 o'clock, Sally was about 110 miles south of Mobile, drifting to the north at the speed of a child in a candy shop, uh, about two to three miles per hour. And that's going to take a while to get to the coast. And we're looking at about tomorrow morning now, a little bit later than we had been talking about earlier. We're expecting the winds to be about 70 knots or 80 miles per hour when Sally makes landfall tomorrow. And uh, the, right now the projected path is right up Mobile Bay. 
If this forecast continues to shift to the east, and it very well may, that will decrease the amount of storm surge that is encountered in Mobile Bay, which will be good news for them. However, there are plenty of opportunities for the forecast to change, and as Brian mentioned, we recommend that you get frequent updates on the forecast for Sally. Regarding the rainfall that we're expecting, uh, record flooding is very well possible in the Mobile and Baldwin County areas. 10 to 15 inches of rainfall, locally higher amounts, combined with the storm surge will make drainage a challenge. So any water that falls is going to be really prohibited from going downstream as fast as it normally would. Low-lying areas, you're going to be particularly susceptible to flooding in Mobile and Baldwin counties. As Sally comes up I-65 towards Montgomery during the day Wednesday and into Wednesday night, we can see upwards of 8 to 10 inches of rain approaching the Montgomery area, which is, again, going to uh, lead us to a threat for flash flooding, also river flooding along the Alabama rivers, the Tallapoosa rivers, possibly by the end of the week. As we move into Friday, Sally is going to progress, go up I-85. She's going to take that right-hand turn and head towards Georgia. And hopefully by Friday morning, uh, she will be weakened somewhat and head into Georgia. Still looking at four to eight inches of rainfall, perhaps as far north as Clanton here and areas to the east. Birmingham, uh, I-59 corridor, you're looking at perhaps two to four inches of rainfall as well. And we can't forget the threat for isolated tornadoes with a landfalling hurricane. Especially in the south uh, part of Alabama, Mobile and Baldwin counties particularly, today and tomorrow, even ahead of landfall today and tomorrow as uh, Sally is coming on shore, there is the threat of isolated tornadoes. Uh, certainly, as Brian mentioned, you should be taking those preparatory actions now, getting to a higher ground, a, a safe place. Uh, the saying that the National Weather Service has is hide from the wind, run from the water, and so now is the time to run from the water. That concludes my briefing, and Governor, I'll hand it to you to back for your closing remarks. Thank you so much, John, and thank you to our state emergency and weather partners for working around the clock to offer my staff and me and as well as the people of Alabama updates on where this storm is headed. To reinforce the significance of Hurricane Sally one more time, I urge everyone to evacuate if you are living in low-lying areas or near the Gulf, Mobile Bay, or even a river if conditions permit. I know you all want to protect, protect your family and your property, but this is not worth risking your life. We are constantly evaluating Hurricane Sally and will provide you critical updates when we have them. So thank you to our friends in the media for helping us get our message out. Thank you to the meteorologist for helping us as well. And may God continue to bless each of you and the great state of Alabama. Okay, so just to recap, Governor Ivey's order that she issued yesterday, her emergency order, temporarily closes all Alabama beaches. This includes all sandy shorelines touching the Gulf of Mexico, privately and publicly owned beaches, and all beach access points. Her order also recommends citizens living near the coast to evacuate or even in low-lying areas. This storm is expected to hit parts of Mobile and Baldwin counties during its path through the Gulf Coast. And under this state of emergency, also COVID-19 orders will be suspended in situations where following them would complicate the prevention of human suffering or the destruction of infrastructure. But the orders remain in full of force for all other situations. Shelters will be open as necessary while following COVID-19 guidelines to the best of their ability, enforcing social distancing and to prevent any outbreaks connected to them. And the proclamation also puts the Alabama National Guard on standby in case needed to be activated to assist in affected areas. Well, for now, just to see where Sally is very a variable and changing pattern, let's go over now to Chief Meteorologist Ted King for a look at how this hurricane is affecting, impacting the wiregrass. Ted? Thank you, Amanda. Yes, and it's a good idea to heed the governor's words about taking shelter and taking the necessary precautions for this storm because it is 
as all hurricanes are, one very dangerous storm. And you'll notice the difference between a lot of rainfall and nothing going on is not very far. So, but I think that in fact that will change as the storm system moves to the north. It's drifting north now and moves on shore and takes that turn to the northeast. But more on that in just a little bit. The problem with this storm is it's just not moving very much, drifting to the north very slowly. As tropical systems are basically entities on their own, they move across the Atlantic because they ride the trade winds. But what, what moves them is a non-tropical system to come by and give it a nudge. But we just don't see that happening. And uh, <coughs> excuse me, it will continue to move very slowly but uh, we'll take a look onshore here and uh, throwing bands of very heavy rainfall onshore the Florida Panhandle region and that with these uh, uh, bands of rainfall heavy rainfall and thunderstorms moving on shore tornadoes are possible okay hence the tornado watch out until six o'clock tonight and uh, the hurricane warning you see uh, Santa Rosa and Escambia County and the tropical storm warning uh, for adjacent areas to the east. And uh, one of the big problems also, I'll get to that in just a moment, there's that tornado watch box until 6 o'clock tonight and flooding, lots and lots of rain is going to be the story. Tropical systems have huge amounts of moisture, okay, and, uh, and uh, they will be dumping it across the region for the next couple of days because it's a slow mover. Lots and lots of rainfall will be the story. Also want to mention, and I'll talk about it more in just a moment, the storm surge, life-threatening storm surge for the Gulf Coastal region, okay. Uh, for the panhandle uh, areas along the coast. Uh, definitely life-threatening uh, storm surge. Two to four foot storm surge possible. Okay, and uh, so uh, please stay away from the beaches. But here's it. Uh, by tomorrow morning, okay, moving on shore is a category one storm, 80 mile per hour winds, and then taking that turn to the northeast and uh, eventually heading away. It's still a tropical storm. Then it becomes just a tropical depression as it moves on into uh, Georgia. But in this cusp area, just phenomenal amounts of moisture being thrown on shore. And, uh, and I can assure you that we will see plenty of rainfall, uh, urban, and, or an urban and street flooding, river and small stream flooding, the whole nine yards as far as the flooding thing goes. So what to expect? Well, right now, life-threatening storm surge. Can't talk about that enough. Please stay away from the beaches. Tornadoes, again, are possible uh, with the system. And hurricane and tropical storm force winds, obviously possible in the warned areas. But, you know, elsewhere, very, very heavy rainfall going to be the story, along with some gusty winds. Here's one computer model uh, showing rainfall totals. And that by Thursday morning, uh, showing an awful lot of rainfall uh, over over five inches and uh, some parts of the panhandle showing 10 inches plus. There's probably going to be a lot more than depicted here uh, with, uh, with this uh, land falling hurricane. So near 80 today, showers and thunderstorms. It'll be breezy at times for the next seven days. Showers and thunderstorms again tomorrow into Thursday. We get a bit of a break on Friday and Saturday, Amanda. Sunday and Monday, a few more thunderstorms in the area. Okay, Chad, thank you. And as we heard the experts in Montgomery say, hide from the wind run from the rain. We also would advise to stay in touch with our neighbors during this time. That's our special report for now. Be sure to tune in to tonight's 5, 6, and 10 o'clock news and throughout the day to our website, dothanfirst.com and also to the WDHN First Alert Storm Team weather app and Facebook Live weather updates. For now, this concludes our special report. I'm Amanda Arnold reporting WDHN News. You've been watching a WDHN News special report. We now return to our regularly scheduled programming.